Welcome to Finite Element Modeling. Today we'll be discussing the analysis of heatsink using steady state and transient analysis, a very important tool in the design of heatsinks. And for that, we are inviting Fidel to guide us through this tutorial. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to our Finite Element Modeling. My name is Fadel Al Safar, and we'll be doing Abacus tutorial today on a heat sink in which we'll be running thermal analysis. We'll be doing a steady state analysis of an electric of a heat sink of an electrical part in which it's usually used as a heat, heat sink for electrical applications. We'll be running steady state thermal analysis. And once we're done with that, we'll move to do a transient state thermal analysis in which we, in the transient state, we'll be introducing initial condition, which is basically initial temperature. And we want to see how eventually, after some time, how would this, uh, uh, this part converge to the steady state solution from the transient states from that initial temperature. So let's start with our steady state problem. We have this geometry that's given here on the right in which we'll be running, which is the part that we'll be modeling. And its main parameters are given here on the right in which we have the base temperature, uh, which is 60 degrees. We have the thermal conductivity. Uh, we have its thermal conductivity, which is the thermal conductivity for aluminum, which is th this material here. We have nine fins. We have the geometrical parameters. We have the temperature of the air and the coefficient of uh, uh, an edge, which is the heat transfer coefficient for convection, which is 12 watts per meter square Kelvin. It's important to start with the assumption that we'll be make during this analysis. We'll be assuming that this is structure or these fins that we have here do not interact with each other, which means that this fin, this fin here on the, on the front does not interact with the fin next to it and, uh, and so on. So having this assumption, we'll be able to model one single fin of these, and then whatever solution we want for the total, for the total heat sink, we'll be multiplying it by, by the heat sink. I mean, by, uh, by the number of fins, not the heat sink. The second assumption that we'll be making is that we're assuming that this, this uh, thin film is actually, I already said it's thin. So it, it has a thickness of one millimeter. So we're assuming that it's thin in which the temperature across its thickness is not varied. So we'll be modeling it as a shell element, and we'll assume, we'll assume that the temperature does not vary across the thickness. We, we are also assuming that the heat transfer coefficient is constant, is not changing between these fins, and we have constant flow, and everything is nice. And the last assumption that we are assuming that there is no heat radiation in which uh, 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 which kind of enforce the first assumption that these fins will not interact with each other. We do not have radiation between them. And yeah, now we can begin. Or just before that, once we do our abacus simulation, we want to compare it with the analytical solution from a textbook in which we took this problem from it. And we'll be running this um, equation. We, uh, we will. Uh, plot it using MATLAB and compare the solution. We'll mesh it in MATLAB and compare the two solutions. So that will be fun. So, and we'll see how to do it in multiple ways. And let's start now. Here's our abacus and cancel that. And now let's go to first, let's just set our directory here. I already saved my folders of interest here in which just a kind of a shortcut. We'll save it in my folder here. I'll have all my files saved in there. And my, it's a good practice to start by naming your model here. And uh, let's call it heat sink steady state. Steady 
states. Okay. And let's go to part now. And let's call it heat. Heat sink. And uh, yeah, and we'll be doing we'll be doing shell element, but we, we're using 3D modeling and shell element. And here the size, the approximate size that we have is round 0.1. The units we'll be using and, and this is meters, so that all units are cons in uh, so our all units are consistent. We'll do the triangle and we'll write the first points for the triangle, which is zero zero at the bottom here. And that's the first point. The second point is if we go back to here, we, we can see that the height is 50 millimeter, which is 0 0.05, and that's our y, and x is 0 0.04 meter. So that's 0 0.04, 0 0.05, and enter. Okay, cool. And done. Uh, this is our nice fin here. And let's go to material properties now. Let's go to materials properties. And the material of the fin is aluminum. So let's call it aluminum. Elasticity. No, we're doing thermal analysis. Uh, let's go for con thermal conductivity. And it's given here as 175. We do not need to change the unit. So now, because all our units is in SI units, so it's, con in, so it's consistent. So 175, okay. And then we want to create the section. Section manager, create. Let's call it the fin section. We'll use shell element here, homogeneous, and continue. Now it's, as, it's asking about the shell thickness, which is the thickness of the film. And if you go back to here, we can see that the thickness is one millimeter. So in meter, that will be zero, zero, 001. Aluminum, thickness of integration point. So we're using shell elements. So usually for shell elements, you're given thickness, but that thickness value it does not actually it, it goes kind it's kind of built in in the in, in the formulation, so the values of that uh, in the simulation or of the temperature or whatever values we're calculating will be calculating through thickness at at uh, specific points, and these specific points are the integration points. So now we're having five integration points, so these values will be calculated as five integration points within the thickness. So that's how shell elements kind of work. Okay, and close this one. Now, remember, we, we, we're not done yet. We need to sign that section to, to our geometry. And now we, we have fin section, metal, all right, okay. And now once it's a green, it means that we're good to go. Now we move from the part to assembly. We create our assembly. It's, uh, it, it's I, I usually prefer to, to do it independent. So the, the, the main difference is that when you choose dependent, it will mesh on the same part that you have. When you choose independent, it will create an instance and all your mesh will be done on that instance and not on the part. Okay. And then let's go to step, a create a step, and let's call it heat step. And we are doing heat transfer. So that's 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 one of the important things that differ from our uh, mechanics problem or the uh, forces uh, forces problem, which we apply. We 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 choose heat transfer here. Okay, and now that's that's an important option as well here. Now you can see that we have the option to do it in transient or steady state. So we we'll start with the steady state solution here. So we'll come to that later. So we'll, we'll choose this one here. Time period, since we're, we're doing at steady states, we do not need to actually change it. 
and we can keep this as is okay and now we go to output we go to manager we we can edit this one here in which we choose what are the parameters that we want to output here and we can see here the parameters so nt is basically nodal temperature that's one of the things that we want here and let's get the heat flux as well and i think that's it it's it's good not to choose many parameters that you do not need because that will slow your simulation and okay right let's proceed now now we need to we, we need to do interaction here in which we want to model how how the environment or temperature around that fin will affect the, thin, the, the, the this thin film and the way we do it is by going to interaction which we can see that now we have the we have h and we have we have the temperature and we have to to add them here into the interaction process so we've got to the first option here this one here interaction manager create and since we need to do it on two phases so the first phase and the second phase let's let's call it first phase and we'll apply it on heat step and if you go to here you can see the surface film condition which what we will be choosing here continue and now it's asking you to select the face or the surface we want this one here and we have two faces and now it's ask you which one so we'll start with this one the brown and now film coefficient which is the the coefficient of uh, of heat transfer coefficient for, for convection, which is a 12 in our case here, and it's asked the sink temperature. And in this case, which is the air temperature, which is 20 here. And okay, and you can see that we applied it here, but we need to apply it on the second phase here. So second phase. And same thing here, continue. We can rotate it or, or just clicking on this one here and then selecting the purple. And if you actually, let's, let's move these here a bit. If you rotate it, you can see this is the purple side. So, and that's what I'll, I'll be choosing. So I'll choose the purple side and it has same, it's in the same, under same condition which we have H is a 12, temperature is 20, and okay, it's mess. And let's, let's have it this way here. And now let's move to the load. And here in this uh, thermal analysis problem, it's good to note that in thermal problem, the load is, we do not have forces here. So load will be heat kind of heat of flux or so. And boundary conditions will be rather temperatures rather than you fix that point or so. Now you, you kind of fix the temperature at the boundaries. And when you look at our problem here, the boundary condition that we have that's actually fixed is the base here in which we are saying that the base temperature is at 60 degrees and this is our boundary here. And we do not have forces or we do not have loads in, 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 in other words that are applied. We do not have heat flux here. So let's, uh, let's go to boundary condition and let's call it base temperature. And it's on heat step and we'll choose temperature here and we'll click continue. And now we want to select the edge. So we can, you can either go right away and select the edge or to make it a bit easier or to make sure that you're selecting the edge you choose that edge from here and you select this one and you click done and now it's ask you about the magnitude of uh, of that temperature that you apply and it's 60 degrees six degrees 
And now if you look at that down here, it says that degrees of freedom and it says 11. And it sounds weird to, to see 11 here at the beginning, but when you look and search for abacus and you see what that means, the, these degrees of freedom, you see that uh, the, the, the element here, its degrees of freedom are numbered from 11 plus in which let's me go here and I Googled that for you. And the element first, the, the element that we're using here, it's called BS4, which is the thermal element. And the way it's, it's, it's numbered for its degrees of freedom, it's number from 11, a plus in which each layer that we have within that shell has integration points and these integration points are numbered from 11 plus. If you have, uh, if you have single section, it's written here that within that single section, which, uh, which is our case here, the, the, there is no temperature variation within the thickness, which is what we are assuming. In this case, the degrees, your degrees of freedom is 11. If you have multiple, uh, multiple sections and multiple thicknesses within the shell, then you'll probably you, you'll choose uh, you'll choose 11, 12, 13, and so on, depending on your integration points of interest. But now what we have is 11, and it's the default one. Click OK. You can Google it to read more about it as well. And now we're almost almost there. We need to go to mesh. Assign uh, mesh control, and it's it's good to, to, to have structured mesh, quadrilateral element, uh, quadri quadrilateral element, element shape, and now it's green, green and nice. So that, that's that's better. And now let's let's have an uh, element number of one. Uh, I mean element size of one millimeter. So if you go to here, global seeds, and click on that, and ask you about the element size. And since I'm using my units of, of dimension I'm using is meter, so that uh, when, when I enter hip 1001, that's one millimeter, and it's the approximate element size, which is one millimeter. And mesh, it's really good to, when you do this, if, and to see the element type that you're using, assign element type, and you click here, and that's an integral part of our process. So we, we're doing thermal analysis. So we, we click on that and it's here, you can see it's that it's, it's asking about different application, which choosing these will change the, the element type that you use. And here we, we're using heat transfer. So it's important to choose that. And so once you choose that, you can see here at the bottom, the element type that you'll be using, it's, its name is DS4. So if you want to learn more about this, for example, this specific element about its degrees of freedom, how to handle it, it's good that just write type abacus DS4 and you'll be reading uh, more about this element, which is what I did previously to, to, to know what that degrees of freedom 11 means. So now we, we assign the element type. So we have heat transfer and we are doing linear analysis. Okay. And we're almost done. Job. Let's uh, create a job here and let's call it heat sink steady state. It's good to call it same name so that I know that the job is related to this model and uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, and do not get confused. Okay, okay. And now let's do data check. Finger crossed. Let's hope that we haven't missed anything here. Let's let's do, go to here. Cool. Submit. History output, no, no history output. We'll come to this point later and we'll see that how we can use but use it, but not for now, it's okay. Just click okay. 
let's go back to our analysis. So that's what we have here. That's our problem. And as it's processing, and it's, it's not supposed to take to, to take time, but here let's let's go to to this step here, in which we we want to compare our results in in a an abacus with the analytical results taken from this example in the text in which the temperature distribution is described by this equation here. And there was a kind of a typo in the text. We, we, we fixed it here in which we have T is the surface temperature, the fluid temperature, which is air, B, which is the sur B, which is the base uh, minus TF multiplied by this in which X is the position, the verti vertical position. And we are measuring the temperature distribution across this vertical uh, uh, vertical direction. So we went to MATLAB and we typed that equation here. And you can see the way that we typed it in which we have these parameters M, which kind of relates the H to K with the geometrical parameters. And it's described by, by, this, by this equation here. And we inserted that, we write it our function. And just here, we move this TF to the other side. So we, we find not the difference. You can do the difference, but here, since we, we, we didn't do the difference in abacus, we want to see it here. So we move that TF to the other side. We, we, uh, we I missed the part in, in MATLAB and choose a step size. Uh, that is uh, quite, uh, that is the same as the step size that we use. So I used mesh grid here, 0 0.001, which is the element size or the approximate size for the element that I set in Abacus so that I get quite approximate close distribution here. And if I click run and plot it, and I think it's, it's, it's done here, yeah. We, I, I have it here in which it's, it's got from the bottom to the top in which here you, we have the color bar in which it states the, the, the highest temperature part in which it's 60 here, which makes sense because our base is at 60 and the temperature start to decrease as we go from, from the bottom to the top and the minimum is around 54. So let's go to our uh, abacus simulation now and it's done. Let's go to results. And this is what we have here. Let's go to uh, let's go to this one here. Let's just have it this way. Let's see it better by just going to here and click on free edges, apply. <clears throat> and let me move this part to the left. I'm used to see it here. Oops. All right, and uh, want to see, so NT is the nodal temperature, which is what we want, and nodal, nodal temperature at 11. And let's see if we can fix these here, move this to the top. Let's let arrange these here, let's move them. And now let's, let's look at what we have here. So this is the temperature distribution here. Let's, let's move this bit down. So if, if you look down here, I, I should have mentioned it, but as we create our steps, we, we get some feedbacks here at the bottom here and they, they, they could be useful. So you can get an idea of how many elements you're using and other parameters that you, you set, but let's, let's focus now here. So it's... Uh, Let's, 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 let's move it a bit so that we can see it here. So th this is the state state solution that we solved, that we, we solved using Abacus. And now we can see the temperature distribution in which here at the bottom, we, we can see here this is 60, which kind of makes sense. And on the top, it's, it's, uh, it, it start to decrease here and up to it reach to 53.8. If we bring our Ab analytical solution from Abacus and put it uh, side by side, and look at the, and look at both solutions, and we can see here this the the hottest temperature here, 
in which at the bottom, which is 60, and the temperature start to decrease, we can see that these results are very close to each other, in which the minimum temperature here is, is, is 54, and the minimum temperature here is 53.8, very close results. So that's good. Now, now that it, it means that our solution is good. We, we, uh, we, 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 we got the results that are very close to analytical results. One thing that what we can do, we can look at the heat flux and it's HFL here. And here it's good to, to, to mention that, or to understand that here our distribution or our heat flow is, it flows in the vertical direction in which it flows from the bottom here all the way up. So that's, that's this is the hottest temperature and the, the, the heat is flowing from this point to that point. So let's see HFL2, which is heat flux for the, for the, for two, the two direction, which is the Y. And here we can see the heat flux in which uh, fr from the bottom here and start to decrease and uh, until it reaches here uh, uh, at the, to, the, to the edges in which it, it's, it's minimum. And it's good to note that the heat flux giving here in Abacus, it's per unit area. So I want to compare these results to the results calculated even within the text. If I go to my slides here, and in the text, they are calculating the, the, the heat flux obtained uh, with, uh, within the analytical solution, and they're obtaining a value which is 2.03 watt per fin. And you can see that even within the analytical solution, they are doing it per fin. So, and then when they see, want to see the total heat transfer, they, they multiply by number of fins, which is kind of what we do here, that the, the model that we did, we modeled one single fin. So what, what I did here is basically, I kind of took what's kind of a, a, an average value of somewhere in the middle, and what's, what's the value in the middle for, uh, for the heat flux, and multiplied, the, and multiplied by the cross-sectional area of that fin, which is the, this width here multiplied by that by multiplied by this dimension here so oops yes multiplied by this dimension and since it's it's uh, it's shell you cannot see the thickness here though there's a trick here in which if you want to see the 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 thickness you, you can do it here but let's let's focus on this one i'll show you to, i'll show it to you in the next step so basically what i was saying is that this uh, this heat flux is per unit area, and if you want to, to, to find it, it's basically you, you you need multiply it by the cross sectional area, and I took an, kind of an average value in between here, which is if you look here somewhere in between, it's around four to four, to, to five e to power four, and if you go to that value, and you multiply it by the cross sectional area, which is the width, which is forty millimeter by the thickness, which is uh, one millimeter, you get a value is, uh, of around 2.2. And the value obtained within the analytical solution is 2.03. So it's, that's kind of a rough average value that they talk for this thin film, for this thin film, but you can tell, you can see that these values are, very, are pretty close. So we kind of match the temperature distribution, the, the, the heat flux within that steady state problem, and we, we obtain these results. So that's good. So that's kind of relief for us that our simulation is giving quite reliable results in which we can now move on to our transient state and plot it and uh, I mean, solve it and see our transient state can converge to the steady state solution. Okay, cool. Now, I think we are, we are ready to move to transient state problem. For the transient state, we have this problem here in which it's exactly the same problem. But for the transient state, we need to introduce our initial condition, which is our initial temperature. And I just assumed it here, assume that, okay, let's have initial temperature at, at zero in which this part initially will have a zero degrees 
And then we want to see, given these boundary conditions, how would it move from that initial condition to the steady state condition? How much time would it take for, uh, for, for, for this structure to converge? And uh, we almost have sa sa same assumptions that we had with, for, with, with the steady states. Except now we, we, we need a bit more, more, more parameters as, as, as well so to, to calculate. We need, to specific, we, we need the, the specific heat of that, uh, uh, of, of this shape here or of this, uh, of this part. For the uh, uh, transient state, we'll need the density as well of the material because because our, our specific heat is, uh, uh, is, uh, is 900 joule per kilogram. And I made a typo here. So let's, it's supposed to be uh, 900, uh, 900 joule per kilogram, not meter. So that's, 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 that's a typo. So to, for this transient state, you'll need density, you'll need specific heat, initial temperature. So let's go to Apicus and redo what we did last time. But now let's do the transient state problem. So let's go to Abacus and let's, do, let's go to model here. Let's, let's create a new model. So right click, create, heat, sync, transient, transient problem. Okay. Problem. Okay. Right. Let's minimize that. Let's stop this one here. Let's move part here, and you, you can we can just select up our part. Make sure that we are working on the right part here, and let's select part. Heat sink transient. We'll do three D shell element planar, formable, and continue. It has the same shape as the other one, so it's zero, zero, and zero. So that's 40 millimeter, and the height is 50 millimeter, and the units are meter. So done. We have this one here, and property, create, and it's aluminum. To enter the density now, let's, we need to go to general here. And the density of aluminum is 2,700 kilogram per cubic meter, not mechanical. We have, we'll need the conductivity, which is 175. And we'll need the specific heat, which is 900. And then we'll go to section. Create same as what we did, then fill section, and we're doing shell element homogeneous. We're not doing composite here. Thickness is the same as the, as the last one, so 0 0.001, five integration points, okay. And we need to assign it, it's not a green yet. So let's select this one, and okay, we're good to go. Now let's go to assembly. Let's create assembly and for independent, okay. And then let's go to step and create step. Let's call it trans transient step. And we are doing our heat transfer. So again, same as what we did last time, continue. But now we want to, we, we, we want to do the transient. So we, we are not doing the steady state. Time period is the time that you, you're giving your analysis to, to, to run. So that's the total time. And now it's, it's, it's in seconds here. So that 
how much time you need to leave your object so that its temperature or the forces that apply to it will, will, will start to have effect on it for how long. So now it, it depends now that the time depends how the how the how fast that material will converge from the steady state to the from the I mean the transient state to the steady state. So if you're not sure, for example, let, let's start with number like 10 here. So that's that's 10 seconds. And in this step, we need to go to incrementation here. And here we, we can see that we can see here several parameters. Maximum number of increments are the maximum number of increments that the software try because it's the solver, it's it, 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 the way it solves it, it runs uh, kind of trial and errors. So after 100 tri uh, tries, if, if the solution does not converge within the solver inside Epicus, it will stop. It will give you like, it will abort and give you kind of error. So if you wanted to try more, you can increase this number. For now, as a start point, let's, let's keep it as is. The initial, the, initial, the initial increment size, that's related to the total time. So here, well, I, want, I want to just, uh, it's asking about the initial size, the recommended initial size. And let's say, for example, it wanted to be 0.1. So if, if you make it big, then that's kind of you're jumping to, the, to, to that number. And we want to see how the temperature varies or, uh, 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 versus time so that it, it's have its, uh, bits with this, uh, starting with a small number. And this max is the maximum step that Apicus during solving can take. And we, I don't want it to go to, uh, to, to 10 right away as a maximum value. So at least I want it to be one, uh, one second per time so that we'll have it moved in steps. This, this step here, maximum allowable temperature per increment in which as the solver runs for per increment, how much, how much do you want it to vary? So the smaller this value is, that the longer the time it will take during solving because this is kind of accuracy now. So how much step, how much that step size you, you wanted? So th this kind of a step size in time, and there's a step size, step size and in temperature, so that it's kind of uh, uh, does not allow large variation in which you'll be you'll be able to see that uh, that that variation. And let's start with five here. So the smaller this number is, the the higher the resolution. The longer time it will take during solving. So let's start with these parameters here and let's click OK. And then next step, let's go to interaction. And just like what we did last time for interaction and to, to include the effect of heat transfer coefficient for the, for the two phases and the temperature of the air, let's call it first phase. And we're choosing surface film here. And we're choosing this phase for now, brown. And film coefficient here, which is H12. And this value is 20, which is air temperature. We need to do it for two phases. Second phase, do the same thing, continue. And now I want to choose the other phase. Now it's, I choose the purple, 12. 20. Okay, now we're good. We let's 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 we 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 forgot the output here. Let's go. Let's let's do the output. So here output we need total temperature, uh, nodal temperature, heat flux, and reaction fluxes. I think the I think yeah we uh, we get here and. Let's go to load now, <clears throat> and let's let's uh, let's select our boundary. So let's add the our base temperature, and we'll select this edge here. Done, and the edge temperature is sixty. Now there is another step that's quite different. Now we said this one we need to have our initial temperature. And that one will be set by a predefined field. 
And to do so, we'll go to here to this step, create predefined field. And let's call it initial temperature. And now this is, it should be applied on the initial step, not the, not the, the transient step, but will be, this step will be applied on the initial step. And you need to select here, you have mechanical and other, and you, you cannot see, you see here velocity stress, and this is not the thing that we want to set. We want to set initial temperature. If we go to other here, we can see other material parameters and what we want to set as our temperature. So click on temperature, okay. And that's the initial temperature of the whole part, the whole fin. So, okay. And as I said here, you know, I want to set, I want to try our initial temperature as 10. I mean, at, at, as uh, zero degrees and we'll see here. And set it at zero and okay. And now we're, we're done with this step. We're almost there. Let's go to, it's uh, the mesh and we want to do structured quadrilateral element shape i mean and we'll have same size as the last one which is one millimeter okay and let's set element type and it's heat transfer element and we'll use same element ds4 okay and then let's mesh it okay great now we're good to go. Let's go to job, create, and then let's call it heat sink transient problem. And now we are, uh, oh yeah, it's, it's model. And we want to select this one, heat sink transient problem. And okay. Okay, and let's do data check. History output, we'll come to that, but not now. Let's, let's run this. <clears throat> check complete, that's good. And we do not have any warnings, so that, that's good. And now we let's submit it. History, that's fine. And let's go to monitor. Let's see what's, what's happening in there. So we have our log here, we have our errors. All right. No errors, no warnings yet. We can see here now, these, these are the steps that, uh, that, that, are, that are running here in which, uh, uh, in which here you, you see, these are the initial steps that we, uh, that it's a try, it's, it's try to go through. And you can see here, you have one U, two U, three U, four U. These are attempts in which solution was not the abacus solver was not able to get solution for these steps. So that's what that means here. But here went, went to the fifth step here, it was able to get solution. So that now it moved, moved from the first increment to the second increment. So that's kind of, you, you kind of follow up. And I honestly, I expected that this solution to fail, but yeah, it, it went through. If that step size that I, 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 I changed at the, at the beginning, for uh, maximum attempts and the step size was a bit larger, then it will uh, probably fail here until you, you'll get abort. But let's go to results here. So uh, initially you should see this just so that because uh, I, I changed that in the, in the previous step, but we, we have it here. So let's see our, our solution. Let, let's see our temperature distribution. Let's go to temperature. And now 
if we look at what we have here, it's, it's, let me move it this way here so that it's, it's more visible. We can see here the base temperature is 60. Well, as we go up now, the, the, the coldest temperature or the minimum temperature is 21. And it's not the steady state temperature, which, which possibly means that, uh, remember that we started from initial condition here, and this is a problem, and the initial temperature was zero. So the temperature of this thin film started to, 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 to increase because we, the base temperature and all temperatures are higher. So it started to increase, but it increased here. But at the, at the end, the steady state temperature, if you remember from the previous solution, which uh, yeah, I have it, I have it in there. It, it was 54, but now it's, it's a 20. So it seems that the time step that I gave for it is not enough. We can simulate how the temperature varies as well. If you go to here to animate and you click on this, you can see here how, how the temperature start to vary here. And we can make it slower, but if you go to here and you can minimize its speed and you can make it play once as well. And you can, you can tell if you can play it from here. And you, you can see here how, how the temperature start to flow or how, or how the pieces start to heat up, but the minimum its minimum temperature was let me move it here Oops. was actually is uh, 20, 21, not not fifty four. So let's go back to the step size. Let's increase our time and see. So let's go to step. And let's go to here. And let's increase our time to 50. And let's let's have this one here, for example, as as two. And okay. So now I I I I set this temperature. I mean this uh this kind of accuracy to, to two here, which means that now it, it will take a bit more time to, to solve it and probably it may, it may fail as well. So let, let's see. So let's submit. No history yet. Let's go to monitor. And let's see, we have 50 seconds time. And the temperature resolution is kind of point, uh, two, uh, 0.2 uh, degrees. So first attempt failed. So it's aborted now. And most possibly it's aborted because now I set the temperature, my temperature to 2 degrees, which is kind of, it needs more attempts to get it. So let's go back now. So to solve this issue, and let's look at the error, what it says here. It says, Time increment required is less than the minimum specified. So the, the time increment that required we need is less than the minimum. And let's let's go here to the step size. A step, I mean. Let's go to here. And we let's let's change let's change this one here, for example. The number of attempts. Let's let's have 500. And we possibly, this, this is the minimum uh, step size that's possible. So that's the initial step size, and that's the minimum. And it was complaining about this one here, but let's see by changing this one only whether it will work or not. So let's start, done. Job, submit, okay, run. <clears throat> And let us see this here. Again, it failed. And, but the, and the reason is that we, we need to change our minimum. And our minimum here is
this value here. So let me let me change it to one e negative negative six. So th that's the that's one microsecond. So let's let's let's, let's click OK. Let's go to job, submit. OK, OK, and then let's let's see what what happens here. Okay, this is getting you. So you can see here at first attempt here, a few attempts in which it, it didn't work out for the first attempt. And then one, two, three, four, four use. And then on, on the five, on the fifth one, it worked here. And then you, you start to get your solution. Here. So that's, that's a step changing the minimum work now. And now you can see here, we, we have multiple steps because I, uh, I, I changed my minimums and I have my resolution to to two to temperature degrees, and you can see here the time increment. And we we are we are going from, uh, uh, not not this one here, but this total time we're going up to 50, 50, 50 seconds, and you can go here. You, you can see here how it moves here. And the maximum step size that it takes here is that maximum step size that I, I included, which is one. So the maximum it can go is from one this one step to step is by one uh, by is by one second. If you the the benefits of having that that step is now you can see in simulation how the temperature varies in multiple and in, in steps, and the solution will not jump to high, to to larger steps and you'll see more details so let's go here and see remember from the last time our minimum temperature was 21 and now let's go to here let's see nt1 which is nodal temperature and let's move this one here to see and now if you look here you can see here maximum temperature which is here at the bottom is 60 and the minimum temperature is 52, which is quite close to the uh, to the initial uh, uh, to the steady state solution, which is the the one I have here. This is the steady state solution we, we we got before, and we can see here our temperature was around the steady state, or this part is around 54, 53.8, and that's very close to it. And possibly if we increase the time. We will we will reach that steady state solution, but you can see the uh, you can see that we we're almost there, which means that our transient solution is almost is, is now converging to the steady state solution, which is perfect. That, that's that's good. Now let's let's try to do more cool stuff and let's see if we want, for example, to uh, to see what happens at one specific node. How that temperature is changing within 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 time for one specific point, how the temperature uh, changes, how the fluxes change it changes within that point here. To do so, let's we we need to go back here, and now we'll we'll be using the the history the history output step. Let's go to to assembly here. And now what what I want to do, I want to divide my structure. Into, into small segments so that I can cr create some intersection which I have points I can select. And this has multiple advantages. So what, basically what I want to do, I want to cut this structure into small pieces. And then when I mesh it, the me meshing will, will kind of follow these, these segments or these lines that I create. And I'll be able to create single node in which that specific node I'll be able to select the temperature on that specific node. Anyway, let, let, let's do it and see it. So I want to create planes first so that I can cut this one. So I'll go to this point here, create datum plane. And then I want to go to not x, y, but x, z. 
and you want to go to the middle here, which is 0 0.025. And then I want to create another plane in the middle here, which using uh, YZ, which is now 0 0.02, which is this line. And now I want to split this one here into uh, into 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 sections. The way to do it is to go to here, to the scissor here. If you do not see the scissor, you can uh, click uh, click and hold. And oh, for this one, you just need to click that. Okay, that's good. So you go to face here. Since we have, since we have shell element, this cell is not active. This is for three D. If you have 2D, which is the shell, which is what we have, you need to go to face if you want to split it. So anyway, face, use data. And now it, it says that if you do so, your mesh, your mesh will, be, will be affected and you'll need to remesh, that's okay. So it's asking you now to select the data. Select it, click okay. And now it partitioned. So now we have two faces. You have this first face and this second face. But now I need to divide it more. So I'll do the same thing here. So select select this one, but now since it's divided now now it's select it's asks you select which face you want to partition. So you want to partition all faces, click done, and then it asks you to select the datum plane, and then I want to select this one here, and then click OK. Now I created, I I uh, I divided my my geometry now. Then after that, what I need to do, I need to go to tools here <clears throat> and then go to sets. And set, I can either go to manager or, or, or create. I'll go for create. And here I'll call it, for example, let me call it temperature, temperature sensor, middle, middle points here. And now it asks you to select points for, for that set. And I want to select this point here in the middle and click. You can select multiple points or lines, but I, I want this specific point here. So that's, uh, that, that's done. If you want to see and make sure whether you, 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 this set was created or not, you need to go to here to the left. And since we created that point in assembly, go to assembly. And now if you go to sets, you can see here, this is what I created here. And you can see it created here on the, on the left here. So that's what I did. Now I need to go to step and we, we go to our history step now. Let's go to this history step and let's go to uh, create. And let's call it hmm, sensor, for example, sensor. output and they want to get it at the transient state click okay <clears throat> and now it's something similar to the output but what they want they want to get the outputs at that specific node that i selected for that set to do so select the domain here and go to set and now you can see here it, it's it will show you this the sets that you already created so now this is the set that i created and the frequency, I, I want it, I'll keep it as this. So it will follow the frequency that I already set in the output and the, the frequency that every step is, it takes. And I want to take the therm, the, the temp, no nodal temperature output. So that was, to do so, go to here, click on this one here. So I want the nodal displacement. And uh, let's see what I want. I, let's take the. Uh, I forgot which, let's see, it's, I believe it's this one. Okay, so that to, to get the heat flux as a uh, uh, per time, that's, that, that's what I think that's what this one will do. And Let's say, let's say now, okay, we are done. We selected our nodal temperature output. We, we selected our set and okay. 
and then we can go to job and resubmit it again and see oh i see now you see that once we did this step now our mesh this uh, was distracted and we need to redo our mesh so let's go to here and set this one i want it to be structured if you didn't cut your geometry properly then you may not be able to do structured uh, quad quadrilateral mesh or uh, so which is uh we, we uh, can give you the results, but usually it's better to use structured mesh. So now we do this, and this one's 0 0.001. So that's good. Let's mesh it. All right. Now let's let's go and see. Let's let's submit this one now. Now we. You can see it's it's taken some time, and uh, it's, it's possibly because now we're we're even we're taking history output and it it records the data, so that that took some time. So now let's go to results. It's done now, and let, let, let's see it. So again, let's move this one here, and our nodal temperature. And that's what we had last time. But the, what we did is that we added another point and we said we, we want to monitor what, what happens at that point. To see that, we need to go XY data, this, this one here on the left, click on it. And then you need to go history output. That's what we created. We created history output. You go for this one now. And you can see here, these are the nodal temperatures. And it seems that I didn't select the right flux values here from, from that from that step. But if you click on this, you can see now the plot for temperature and how it varies from zero value, which is my initial state. And you can see here how it how, how it increases. And then it's kind of it has a plateau in which it's it's approaching now the steady state. And you, you can see here, if we, if we increase the time by a bit more, we will get our steady state solution. So let's, let's, go, let's go back and see this, to see how can we add the, the heat flux as well, because it seems that I, I didn't choose the right step. Let me see. Let's go for this step. Let's, let's increase this one here and see. Let's, let's have it as 80. So that we have a second, and let's let's keep these steps here. Let me go to outputs and manager edits and I believe it's this one here. Flux at nodes here. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, okay, let's 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 move fast now. Okay, we we we're done with that. We're done with done. And job. Let's resubmit it. Okay. And it's running now. And now we, we have longer time, so possibly it will, it will take a bit longer. You can see now we, 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 we're having our solution. Now it's, it's solving and it's total time. Now it's, it's moving here. And these are the steps that's taken. And this is the accumulation of time. And um, the time step that we set is, uh, it's 80, so this number has to reach up to 80. The longer the time that you, you said, the, the longer processing time as well it will take. And you can see here, each step is again, is, 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 has a maximum of one, uh, one second, it moves by one second. So it's done, that's good, didn't take a while. So let's go to results now.
and let's see our values here. Let's go to my node temperature and it's it's here. And now you can see here it, it's approaching more that the steady state solution now. So that's uh, that, that's good. Now it's it's 53 point something here. And here it's it's 54. So that, that that's good here. So let's go to our history output data. Let's see if we what we can plot here. So we can see the temperature here, just like what we saw last time. And you can see here now it's 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 almost a steady state solution here. And we can see the heat flux as well at that sensor point at the middle point that we created. And if we plot that, we can see the heat flux as well at that point here. And we can see as well the heat flux as well. It's 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 approaching a steady state as well. <clears throat> so so that's good. Now we did the steady state solution and the transient solution. We we show that how the how the how the values in the steady state and the transient state and steady state will approach the same results after a given time. You need to make sure that you set your step size correctly. If it's too, too large, then you may get some errors. If you want to get the plots of the temperature or so, you can do just like what we did last time. You can go to path, create down here, for example, vertical path. And if you want to get the results here vertically, if you wanted to, if you want to get at one single point versus the time, you can. What you can do is what we did, is uh, you you set you may, you create a new set. You 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 include this in the history output, and then you you'll get it from X Y data, just like what we just did. Now we created path, we go to XY data, we go to path here and uh, continue. We have this one here. Let's see if we can get this. So yeah, and that's that's a plot how the temperature varies from the base, which is at uh, at uh, at 60 degrees. And as, as we go to the top, which is to up to 50 millimeter, you can see that how it's how it's I would convert it to 50 to around 54 or so. If you want to save your data, you can go to save as here and you call it uh, vertical temperature distribution, for example, and click OK. And then let's let's say, for example, you want to save the data plot data and your history output data. We will do it uh, and then we will see how to do them all. So let, let's assume that we, you want to get this one as well here at that single point. And you'll need to go to as well, this one save as and call it uh, time dependent data and click okay and you want to extra extract them and save them in your file they're not saved in the file yet what the way to do it now you save them you need to go to report here probably you can do it multiple ways but this is one of the ways you need to go to report and these are the files that we we, we saved the time dependent data and vertical uh, temperature the distribution and we you, you, you select this one here go to set up and now choose the ex file extension which is probably it's better to use csv or text and you're, you're doing here time dependent let's call it oops time dependent data and then you can click apply and once you do so it will be saved and if you actually now, if you go, if you go to your folder that you set, you set it as a directory, you'll be able to see it. So if you go to project two, V2, 
and if you go down here you see here this is these are the, the the data that we just saved you can open it and now you can see the data uh, for the time and uh, i believe the the temperature or so yeah these are uh, this is time and this is uh, this is temperature and you, you, you can take now this data if you want to plot it in MATLAB, read it with MATLAB and plot it. So yeah, let's go back here. And that's the way. And if you want to save the other one, you can do the same thing here and you can call it different name. If you do not change the name and you still have a pen to file, it will basically include it in the same file, which creates kind of a mess. So it's, it's better to change the name. And with this, I believe I'm almost done. And we, we're done with this project. I hope that you learned something and I learned a bit as well. So I hope that that was not so boring. And I hope it, it's a bit of fun. And uh, let's go back to our, our slides and let's have kind of a summary of what we did. We started with uh, a steady state solution of a heat sink problem. We started with idealization and uh, modeling of, uh, of this one in which we, we talk only one single fin of, uh, of this heat sink. We modeled it, we, to we, 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 we took into consideration the boundary condition, temperature and, uh, and edge and the, the air temperature, uh, the material properties, we modeled them, we solved them and we, uh, we got our solution for the steady state. We went then and, and changed the problem to the transient state. We included the initial condition, which is uh, the temperature. We needed the spe specific heat since it relates the, uh, the, the, the heat input, the heat capacity to the, to the mass of the material and the temperature. And we included the temperature, we solved these in Abacus and we got our values. We confirmed our results with the analytical results using this here in MATLAB, we solved it. We saw that how these values are very close to each other. With that, I conclude my, my presentation and I hope you enjoy it and thank you very much.